What's up, Bills Mafia? Today we're going to be talking about the winners and losers following the Bills 2023 offseason moves. But before we get to that, let's get to that intro. Welcome to the Mafia Sports Report. I am Tommy. Please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell because I always forget to tell you. And today, guys, we are discussing the winners and losers following the Bills 2023 offseason moves. And this, once again, I want to thank Bills Wire uh, for doing this article. And we're going to go through this article and we are going to uh, see... Uh, you know what their thoughts are on the winners and losers. So let's get to it right to it. And right away, they're calling out one of the winners would be Josh Allen. And they're saying Josh Allen, GM Brandon Bean, set out to prioritize uh, strengthening the areas of weakness in the Bills offensive group surrounding quarterback Josh Allen. And in free agency and the NFL draft, he did just that. What's more, he likely not finished as he is always looking for ways to improve the roster and could always continue to add roster talent between now and the end of the 2023 regular season. The greatest beneficiaries of this thus far has been Allen himself, who now has several reloaded and stronger position groups to work with an offensive line, receiver, and running back. With a new level uh, of dedication and focus and desire to take the next steps, as a pocket passer, Allen is a good position. Allen is in a good position to exceed thanks to all the offseason additions. Uh, and I agree with that. Uh, listen, man, they went out and got in free agency. Let's just start with that right away. Trent Sherfield, Hardy. So you got two speed receivers who are both electric when they had the ball in their hand. Uh, both guys ran like I think a 4-3 uh, at their combine. So super fast. Trent Sherfield coming off a very good year with Miami. That is a great addition for the Buffalo Bills. Hardy also, when he can stay healthy, is an electric player. Uh, he's shown that in New Orleans. Also, he went. they went out and got McGovern. Uh, they went out and got David Edwards on the offensive line as well. They went out and got Brandon Shell on the offensive line. So they helped out with the offensive line. Then in the draft, they went ahead and drafted Dalton Kincaid, which is one of the best pass catchers in the draft, uh, 2023 NFL draft. They also got Osiris Torrance, guard out of Florida, who I was all on board with. I was screaming. Get this guy! And they finally did in the second round, which I was shocked that he fell out of the first round. Uh, that guy is an absolute stud. Um, and so, yeah, once again, um, Brandon Bean this offseason went ahead and built a much better offensive line and added uh, weapons to the offense to help Josh Allen, um, you know, when when plays get, you know, busted. Right when when Stephon Diggs is double team, who do you go to? Right now you have a security blanket in Dalton Kincaid. Now you got better pass protection. Now that you added a better offensive line group to give Allen a little bit more time, so his receivers can actually get open. Um, and that goes also towards the running back room. Right, you also got run blocking now. Now you can open up the play action. Now that you can run uh, better on the offense. So yes, for sure, Josh Allen is a winner. Uh, in this offseason. Now let's go to the next guy they have up here, and that is Ryan Bates, and they're calling him. They're, well, not, they're not calling him a loser. They're saying he's the loser of the 2020, 2023 offseason moves by the Buffalo Bills. So they're saying Bates is still slotted as a starter on the Bills' offensive line, but projected first-round 2023 NFL draft pick turned second-round selection, Osiris Torrance, is the future at that position, which I agree. And the future might be now, which once again, Bills Wire, I agree. Um, 
Torrance had an impressive run at Florida, particularly at protecting his quarterback. While the Bills have shown with past high round selections, such as last year's top two picks, Kyer Elam and James Cook, that they'll take a measured approach towards developing and working them into the game plan, they do get playing time in their first season. Torrance is projected as the future at Bates' position, and he's also joined by fellow draftee Nick Broker and free agent additions Connor McGovern and David Edwards at the at the guard position group. While it's his spot to lose, Bates will have Torrance competing for the starting spot in the line rotation, and I agree. Listen, um, Mikey is Mikey, my co-host, is not uh, is on the. Th- He's pretty much saying that he does not feel that um, McDermott will start uh, Osiris Torrance week one. He feels like maybe Torrance will wind up getting uh, that starting nod somewhere down the season, uh, in the middle of the season possibly. I think that Osiris Torrance will beat out Bates in camp. I believe he'll look better in preseason as well. Uh, this guy, once again, when he got transferred to Florida, he had earned that right guard spot. He went ahead and earned it, locked it up. He won multiple awards. Um, he never gave up a career sack while in college. Uh, once he gets his hands on you, it is a wrap. Um, he is an absolute dog. He's more of a run blocker, but clearly he's a pass protector too. Um, he just does not let uh, defenders get uh, to the quarterback. So, um Listen, I like Ryan Bates. I do. Ryan Bates can fill any position, which is unbelievable. Great to have uh, as far as depth goes. And he may be our future center. But right now, Ryan Ryan Bates is just not... Right guard is probably the weakest spot for him. He's better at left guard. But McGovern is taking that left guard spot. Okay? So I just... I feel like they're going to have an open competition with Ryan Bates and Osiris Torrance, but Torrance, I believe, is going to show uh, why he should have been a first round, why he was, uh, you know, touted as one of the best guards coming out in the NFL draft this year, uh, why he won all those awards. Um, he's just going to, he's going to prove that in camp, he's going to prove that in preseason. And I just, unless something bad happens, I can't see why Torrance can't beat out Bates, uh, you know, for that starting right guard position in week one. All right, so let's move on to the next one here. What they got. Let's see. So the next one, they got winner, Ken Dorsey, baby, offensive coordinator. The guy that Bill's Mafia is, uh, you know, super tough on, which, uh, once again, I just I don't agree with Bill's Mafia, um, you know, and their take when it comes to Bill's offensive coordinator, Ken Dorsey. But uh, in his first year as the Bill's OC, Ken Dorsey did some good things, yet also raised some serious questions by season's end. Namely, in his usage or lack thereof, wide receiver Stefan Dix, who saw double team coverage with a depleted receiver group. All right, you guys heard that, correct? <laughs> a depleted receiver group. By the way, Stefan Dix had his one of his best seasons as a pro last year. Uh, so I don't know if he, he didn't really get used on the offense, if that's fair to say, but we'll continue. Uh, lack of con- continuity with the run game and poor play calling in a division round playoff loss that featured the right offensive play calling for the weather by the opposing team. I agree. With the improved receiver and running backs group as well as the reloaded offensive line rotation, plus the addition of 2023 first round pick and uh, first round pick and elite versatile, uber talented in tight end Dawson Dalton Kincaid. It's not hard to imagine the type of success former offensive coordinator Brian Dable could have had with this group. I don't know. Brian Dable also made a ton of mistakes while he was offensive coordinator, and that's just it. Dorsey took over following Buffalo's most successful season as offensive as on offense under head court, head coach Sean McDermott. And with Allen, Diggs, and company pride for a championship contention, there's only so much of a grace period for him to succeed. That being said, he'll ne- he'll have that chance with a new season as a beneficiary of a reloaded offensive group. Flush with the depth and talent at multiple positions. I agree. Um, listen, I, I'll say it again, and I'm not going to keep, uh, you know, 
going over the whole Ken Dorsey thing because a lot of people uh, just have that thing where like he's a bad coordinator and that's it. I'm uh, and they don't want to hear anything else. But right there, it kind of tells you right there. Their wide receiver group last year was just not very good. Okay, guys, and I think a lot of Bills Mafia do agree with that. Okay, besides Stefan Diggs, uh, a lot of people didn't show up. Right, they didn't show up to the dance. Right, Gabe Davis, who was supposed to be our number two heading into last season, though I don't think he had a terrible season. I think we expected a better season out of Gabe Davis, and he just didn't provide that. He had a lot of drop passes, um, and so did Stefan Diggs. By the way, he had nine drop passes last year. That is uncharacteristic of Stefan Diggs. He's usually more sure-handed. Uh, with that, but everybody else just kind of did not do their job. Uh, Crowder got uh, broke his ankle early in the season, I think week four. Um, and then Isaiah McKenzie was put in the slot. He just wasn't a true slot. He's more of a gadget receiver. Um, we went out and got Cole Beasley, John Brown out of retirement, both guys out of retirement. That's how desperate we were. At, you know, Dawson Knox was more used more as a blocker than a tight end, really, on offense. And he had an off year because of that. So now that we built an offensive line that could protect Josh, that can run, that can help with the run blocking, um, you know, you got a year two James Cook who looked much better on the second half of the year last year. I expect this offense to be way better. I expect Ken Dorsey uh, to dial it up a little bit more on his creativity. Um, and we'll see what happens this year. Right now, it looks great on paper, of course. But, you know, we got to see it on the field. But right now, with the additions, I expect this offense to be better than it was last year, which, by the way, was still second in the league in offense, second in scoring, right behind the Chiefs. So it wasn't as bad as you guys think it was. Now, down the stretch, it got a little rough, no doubt about it. The, the Bengals game was disappointing, but I think that Bengals game was a disappointment for the whole team. Now, moving forward, let's go to the next guy. All right, winner, defensive tackle, Ed Oliver. So Oliver has faced scrutiny by those in the media for his developmental uh, traje trajectory, perhaps due to his lack of sacks or his usage in the Bills' defense. Despite what uh, their uh, what their critics may be, the Bills believe in the player they took ninth overall in the first round of the 2019 NFL Draft. After all, He's only 25 years old and figures to continue to develop at the pro level. Plus, recent additions to the Bills' defense, like Von Miller and Leonard Floyd, figure to help open up more opportunities for Oliver as well. And I, once again, agree. Because with the additions of... By the way, the Leonard Floyd uh, signing was unbelievable. We signed him late. He was the guy that could have got more money was supposed to get more money on the open market, had the opportunity to get more money, and took less to come to the Buffalo Bills. We all know Von Miller's coming back from ACL surgery. He says he could return week one, but I don't think the Bills are going to rush him now that they got Leonard Floyd. No reason to rush him anyways, um, especially now that you got Leonard Floyd. And when Von does come back, and now you got Von, Leonard Floyd, uh, a Gregory Rousseau who's only getting better, yes, Ed Oliver is going to flourish uh, and look, and, and actually, his his numbers should get better. You should see more sacks uh, from Ed Oliver. But Ed Oliver's just not just a, a guy that you know he gets to the quarterback. He also stops the run. He's a good overall player, and I understand why they locked him up. Um, those players are gonna you know want you know they get big money, more money as the years go, as the salary cap gets higher and higher. Might as well lock your guy up. He's young. Um, and, but but I tell you what though we need to see a little bit better from Ed Oliver in the 2023 season. Now that you got paid, uh, it's time to show your worth. It's time to take your game to another level, and and that's what I hope to see. And I I believe we will see that from Ed Oliver. Now moving forward, let's go to the next guy. Loser, <laughs> they're saying uh, is going to be. I'm sorry if I'm skipping past this here. Well, I'm skipping past it a lot. I'm sorry, guys. So, loser, they got, uh, I think it was Boogie Bashin, but we're going to go to that real quick, guys. I apologize for this. Uh, so, there's the Ed Oliver. And then the loser, they got Boogie Bashin, defensive end, edge rusher. I think he, I really truly believe he is on the bubble. 
Um, but let's see what they got to say. In March of this year, I pointed out that defensive end Boogie Basham currently qualifies as a trade asset due to both the size of the Bills' pass rush group as well as their lack of production last season. That as well. Now, me when I said he's on the bubble, that doesn't mean necessarily they'll cut him. He could be used as trade bait. Very possible. Same with A.J. Epinesa, by the way. Uh, a conclusion that uh, the Athletic more recently came to as well uh, and that heavy took notice, uh, and that heavy took notice of when I first mentioned it. The addition of Le- the addition of Leonard Floyd and resigning of Shaq Lawson has only increased the crowdedness of that group. Plus, GM Brandon Bean provided insight this offseason as to a lesson he learned in Carolina about drafting the best players available, which categorizes ba- categorizes Basham as the aforementioned asset and potential trade chip. And as we've seen this in the offseason, and as we I was seen in the offseason in the case of former defensive leader Tremaine Edmonds, who the Bills lost for nothing in free agency. That is true. They could have traded him. They can't afford to keep everybody. Still, head coach Sean McDermott likes a full rotation group at the defensive end to keep the pass rush fresh and strong throughout the game. And we could see more blitz packages with him calling the defensive plays this season, which I think we will. Long term, Lawson figures to be the player whose time with the Bills will be a shorter, uh, will be shorter. Though, if Basham doesn't take the next step at the pro level soon, he might also find himself in uh, that category um, in that conversation. Then again, he could flip this to be being a winner with a strong performance this season as the bills will always want to roll out the best talent they have in their starter and rotation group given the bills track record of developing and resigning their own homegrown players they draft it may be more likely basham stays in the fold but with some pressing long-term needs at the other positions he still finds himself in the position for now of competing not to be the odd man out. Uh, so, yeah, listen, <laughs> it's going to be a big off uh, training camp preseason for Boogie Basham, A.J. Epinesa. These guys need to prove themselves. A.J. Epinesa, second-round pick, Boogie Basham, second-round pick. Uh, both guys, uh, listen, I think A.J. took a little step up last year in his place. He had, I think, I think he had six and a half sacks. Boogie Basham just... I felt like he didn't really take a step back. He didn't. Uh, he didn't take a step forward. I mean, but he didn't take a step back either. I kind of felt like he stayed the same. Uh, now you're going in year three. You got to show your worth. If not, I, you know, listen. I think Brandon Bean. You need to get what you can for him. Um, and, and just it is what it is, man. You know, you got to take your loss there and and get a draft pick, get a, maybe another player. Um, but Brandon Bean is usually good at that, at getting uh, you know something for nothing. Uh, that that it's going to be a guy you wind up cutting anyways. So let's see if they got anybody else here uh, on this list here. Wide receiver winner, Stefan Diggs. So despite any of the off-field noise in the media surrounding his working through any issues with the team, um, his uses or their ultimately playoff exit, the Bills offseason has begun uh, has been good for star wide receiver Stefan Diggs. In fact, one could say that after Josh Allen, Diggs may prove to benefit most. Okay, During their 2022 campaign, Buffalo's receiver corp depth was thinned by injuries, requiring their starting group to shoulder much of the load. While tight end Dawson Knox stepped up in the second half of the season back into an impact player role, Gabe Davis' experience drops and Diggs uh, experienced double teams as then Bills wide receiver Isaiah McKenzie was unable to be the threat in the slot the Buffalo uh, that Buffalo needed him to be in order to fill the, fill the void left by Cole Beasley. It was enough that Brandon Bean brought both Beasley as well as former wide receiver John Brown back late in the season to try and fill those voids. This year, however, Bean has replenished depth behind Diggs all the way down to the pipeline of the receivers' groups. From the starter spots down to the depth chart, Knox projects to continue in an impact role. 
Davis will look to improve on last season, and Diggs will have the help of new free agent additions, Trent Sherfield and Deontay Hardy, along with second year pro Khalil Shakir. And there's the Bills, and then there's the Bills' newest first round draft edition, tight end Dalton Kincaid. The rookie and the rookie and elite talent gives the team two tight end packages and the ability to play out of the slot in other positions which will command and dictate defenses more. The end result is it opens up more holes for the Bills' offense and prevents opponents from double-teaming Stefan Diggs. And I agree. Once again, I think this is the Bills' best offseason in the McBean era. Um, I love the additions to Sherfield, of Hardy, um, of Dalton Kincaid. Absolutely love it, man. Now you brung in help for Josh. Now defense, ha- they just can't double uh, Stefan Diggs and not worry about the rest of the receivers. Also, Khalil Shakir. I really have faith in Khalil Shakir. I think Khalil Shakir can be an absolute beast in the NFL. And uh, you saw kind of flashes last year. Uh, and by the way, I feel like he's a very mature player for last year. For him being a rookie, very mature. So let's see if Khalil Shakir... Can be can beat out Sherfield as of right now. I think Trent Sherfield has that notch over Shakir um, because he has the experience, right? Uh, and he had and he's coming off a good season with the Miami Dolphins. Uh, but yeah, man, definitely a winner, Stefan Diggs, in my opinion, because of the additions. So let's go to the next guy, and that is going to be loser wide receiver Gabe Davis. Surprising that they're saying that. Given his past developmental trend and success as a bill, last season's bumpy transition to wide receiver two might prove to have been growing pains for Gabe Davis. He'll have the chance this season to prove it uh, was just that. The short-term deals for free agents like Sherfield suggest as much. Plus, Davis stands to benefit from the Bills' uh, aforementioned offseason moves in a similar way to Diggs. And that, there will open up opportunities for him as well. Plus, had he caught the passes he dropped last season, this likely wouldn't be a talking point this offseason. But for now, the talent, depth, and competition have improved both in the receiver group as well for the wide receiver two role. Listen, guys, I still think Gabe Davis is going to be your number two wide receiver. Um, I, I Listen, it's a contract year. I still feel like Gabe Davis can be a number two in the NFL. I still, I see the, the um, you know, I see the uh, talent in him, right? You've seen flashes of brilliance, really, from Gabe Davis from the Chiefs playoff uh, game in 2021. Right, you've seen games where he's had against Pittsburgh. There's been plenty of games where he's really shined, and then there's been games where he has been a no show, or when he's just dropping the passes. Right, his completion percentage is low. His drop percentage is bad. He needs to improve that. This is a this is a contract year, and I believe he will. And I'm on record of saying, and I'll say it again. I have a feeling that Gabe Davis is going to shine this year. I have a, I feel, I have a feeling that Gabe Davis is going to get a thousand yards receiving this year, and we'll see if the Bills extend him. But you got to remember too, Gabe Davis last year was banged up. That I think that ankle injury played a, a role in why he, uh, you know, fell off a little bit last year, while he was having the case of the drops. I think I, I just really feel like it was more mental than physical as well. And maybe it was, maybe it did bother him for the rest of the season. Uh, but I have a feeling that Gabe Davis will be back working hard this season, and you're going to see a better Gabe Davis, in my opinion. Uh, so I don't know if he's a loser there. I'm going to say he's a winner because I think that with the addition of Trent Sherfield, uh, Cleo Shakir, Hardy, maybe that will, uh, you know, inspire him to play better, to earn that, that keep that number two spot, which I think he will. So, anyways, moving forward, uh, winner. Middle linebacker, Tyrell Dotson. So they're having him as a winner. Um, So let's see what they say about Dotson. Uh, Let's see if we can get to Dotson real quick. Uh, Sorry, guys. This is my keyboard lacking a little funny here. So let me get to Dotson real quick. So let's get to Dotson. All right, guys. Sorry about that. Apologize. Apologize. So, all right. So uh, winner. Middle linebacker, Tyrell Dotson. 
So what they say about Dotson, Dotson filled in at times last season for de- defensive leader Tremaine Edmonds. And with fo- fellow linebacker Terrell Bernard, Buffalo has elected to give their in-house players a shot to fill the void left by Edmonds' departure. Dotson will get his shot to prove this offseason he can do just that. Um, and listen, I agree. I do. Um, I think Dotson's going to get an opportunity to win that spot. Um, I'm not sure if he will, though. Um, I think they are. They may lean towards Bernard. Um, I think I think the third round pick Dorian Williams is very intriguing. I hope he also gets an opportunity to prove that he could be the middle linebacker. I gotta say, man, it's gonna be an interesting training camp uh, and and preseason to see who earns that starting spot at middle linebacker. Uh, but if I was a betting man. Um, I'm going to go with Dorian Williams, but I could lose out. (laughs) I don't know. I'll be honest with you, but I'm going to go Dorian Williams. I think he's going to shine in camp and in preseason, but, uh, it could go to, it could go to Dotson. It, It very well could go to Dotson. So let's go to the next guy and the loser they're having, believe it or not, safety Micah Hyde to be fair. Uh, to be fair, Bill Safety Micah Hyde was never going to, th- to find the deal he wanted on the free agency market. Uh, not because of his talent, skills, or ability, but due to how deep the 2023 NFL draft that conceded with his free agency was at the defensive back's position. Instead, he landed a two-year deal to return to the Bills, where he thrived and had the most success and could continue to compete for a championship. But during his free agency... Uh, we learned the Bills are also planning for the future at that position. They are drafting and developing talents who could become starters at either corner or safety, like Christian Benford and 2023 draft selection Alex Austin, and and adding a player who would start on another team to back up both him and Micah Hyde. I think they're talking about <laughs> Jordan Poyer, by the way. Uh, they probably made a mistake here. So it's actually Jordan Poyer. All right. Uh, so anyways, uh, both him and Micah. Hyde. By the way, Micah Hyde is on his last year. Who could resign long-term at the safety position uh, in Taylor Rep, which is a great pickup as well. Really, uh, Hyde could be, and I think they're referring to Poyer. Really, Poyer can be viewed as a winner in free agency given his options uh, outside Buffalo. But in terms of his contract length and Rapp's addition, He'll have competition as well. Um, I agree um, with that. Listen, um, and they were talking about, I don't know. They they obviously made a mistake there. They were talking about Poyer. So Micah Hyde is on his last year, by the way. This is last year for Micah Hyde. I don't know if they'll extend him or not for another year. I would, I, I would, I would give him a one year extension, have him, have him and Poyer, uh, Poyer and Hyde leave together you know or retire together in buffalo that'd be awesome um but we'll see when it comes down uh to high but as far as poyer goes listen man it's i think it was a two-year deal uh to stay in buffalo i i I think he thought maybe the market would be better for safeties but it just wasn't this offseason and i felt like he just was like you know what i'll just stay right where i'm at and that's exactly what he did. And I absolutely love it, man. I love Jordan Poyer. I love Micah Hyde. I'm glad they were returning. They're the base, best safety duo in the NFL still, in my opinion. And we'll see what happens. So let's get back to this list here. And we're going to get to the winner, and that is Von Miller. So they're saying right there, uh, outside linebacker, which is Edge, uh, Von Miller. So let's go back to that. And, of course, my computer is going right back up for some odd reason. (laughs) Sorry, guys. So let's go to uh, Von Miller here uh, as soon as I get there. So there's Dotson. And, yeah, they definitely met Jordan Poyer there on a safety position. So uh, next up is Edge Rusher, which they're saying linebacker, but he's Edge. Von Miller, they're giving him the winner. They're saying when Von Miller signed with the Buffalo Bills in free agency last offseason, it, it, uh, it was with competing for Super Bowl Super Bowls in mind. One of the top, stars, top star players in the NFL at his position throughout his career. Uh, he's all, he is he has also been a leader of the defenses he's played for. While Tremaine Edmonds fielded 
uh, play calling duties on defense. It was a talent whose play fetched him a large multi-year deal during free agency. This offseason with the Chicago Bears, he was never the vocal and energetic leader that group needed. That is true. Miller became that leader the moment he arrived in Buffalo. That is very true. The addition of former Rams teammates like uh, linebacker Leonard Floyd to bolster the Bills' pass rush and safety Taylor Rapp to do so for the safeties group, as well as third-round uh, 2023 draft pick linebacker Dorian Williams adds increased depth and talent to the group he'll be leading. And with head coach Sean McDermott, Sean McDermott calling the plays on defense, the Bills' pass rush could eat even more this upcoming season. So that is the article there by Bill's Wire, and I agree. Listen, Von Miller now has a lot of help, and he also has a former teammate in Leonard Floyd who's came over. Once again, you could do a lot of uh, sets with Miller out there, with Floyd out there, Rousseau. I mean, this defense can be nasty, especially under a aggressive style defense that Sean McDermott likes to call. Um, so I am very curious um, how Sean McDermott, uh, you know, uses them. If he uses them all together, if it, you know, if he mixes it up, it's going to be very interesting. If he if he takes Taylor Rapp inside the box at linebackers at, at, at certain uh, you know certain plays. It's going to be a fun season to watch Sean McDermott, uh, you know, as a defensive play caller and on an aggressive style defensive play caller. It's going to be fun because that's one thing uh, Leslie Frazier was not, and it was, it was an aggressive style defense. So, yeah, I think I think Von Miller definitely uh, is a winner with that, with all the additions as well to help him. So, guys, uh, I want to know your thoughts, your comments. Uh, go ahead and comment below. Bills Mafia, I love you. And as always, go Bills. I'm out of here. Peace! And look at that go! He could go all the way! Touchdown! 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 The Bills make me wanna shout. Kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. Come on now, the Bills are making it happen now. Stand up now, come on and shout. Yeah, yeah, yeah.